I can't believe it has been 3 years since I reviewed the first ever Xbox ergonomic mechanical keyboard. But now we're taking a look at their latest offering which essentially shares the main characteristic of the original Xbox keyboard but with significant changes to cater to a wider audience. It still features Xbox's own ergonomic split layout but it now offers standard keycap sizes, hot swappable switches, and wireless mode, all in a crystal clear acrylic construction. With that being said, let's get into it. Before we start, the background of choice is the Keep of Power desk mat from Zigmats PH designed by Input Universe. This is not sponsored, but I'll put their links below if you're interested. The packaging for the Xbox Crystal is pretty good, a decent quality black box. Upon opening the box, you'll see a sort of slogan of Xbox here, a nice foam cover, the Xbox Crystal itself, a white coiled cable, a worky cup puller, and a switch puller. At first look and touch, you might think that this one features the popular Arizo layout, but if you look closely, it is actually quite different. The chassis is made out of hard clear acrylic plastic that doesn't flex at all for outstanding robust build quality, especially for a plastic keyboard. It weighs roughly around 1.3 kilograms. Now, the Xbox ergonomic layout features a combination of ortholinear and Arizo layouts with some additional keys at the center and a few other differences including a longer right shift key and instead of a right backspace, we have a delete key. Now, like the Arisu and Alice layouts, the goal of the Xbox layout is to alleviate chronic pain from a natural posture a standard layout offers, while taking it a step further by adding some keys at the center, such as backspace, enter, control, and shift, to prioritize the dominant index finger over the less utilized pinky finger, and at the same time, minimize the amount of time you'll reach out to the far right side of the keyboard. In theory, especially if you're willing to give an ample amount of time to adjust and adapt this unorthodox layout, you'll benefit from not only a more comfortable typing experience, but also a faster typing experience since your fingers won't have to move away from the home row keys. I'll share with you later how I honestly feel about this layout, but for now, let's take a closer look around the keyboard and discuss all the other features it has to offer. Looking at the front side, you'll see that it features a high-profile case, which means the switches are well hidden inside the case. But of course, since it's transparent, you'll see its internals. Flipping it at its side, the acrylic case also features a sort of floating design with an angled form factor for better ergonomics. You can also see the screws around the keyboard and other components inside. Turning it at the back side, we have a recessed USB Type-C port right here. And turning it all over at the bottom, we have four rubber feet, the power switch for Bluetooth connectivity, and some technical information and branding right here at the center. You can also see here the screws and pretty much all the bottom components of the PCB which we'll take a closer look at later when we tear this keyboard apart. Now like the Arizo layout, we have dedicated arrow keys, some of the nav cluster keys here on the right side, and a split space bar configuration. I also appreciate the small details like curved corners, floating case design, and a subtle Xbox logo here beside the enter key. Overall design wise, I like how the Xbox crystal look especially the fact that unlike the original Xbox keyboard with non-standard keycap sizes, this one is compatible with most keycap sets. Speaking of keycaps, the stock keycaps are made out of durable PBT plastic with dye sublimated legends. This means the legends are essentially permanent and that the keycap's texture will not shine easily over time. The keycap thickness is around 1.4 to 1.6 mm, which is decent enough for a single shot keycap. In terms of the switches, what we have here is the Gateron North Pole Yellow Switch, which is linear, with an actuation force of around 50 grams. The top and bottom housings are made out of polycarbonate plastic, while the stem is made of thermal plastic and is pre-lubed out of the factory. The sound signature, I'd say, is relatively quiet, with a rather sticky or squishy feel when you press and listen to it closely, especially during bottoming out. Now, since all Gateron North Pole switches are transparent, one way to differentiate them from each other is the color identifier at the bottom. Now, what I appreciate about this latest version of the Xbox keyboard is the fact that it now features hot swappable sockets, which means not only you can customize the keycaps to your liking, but you can also customize the switches depending on your preference. It's north facing though, so you're kinda limited in terms of compatibility with short pole switches and cherry profile keycaps. Now, as for the stabilizers, at first glance, they don't look pre lubed at all, but later on, when we tear this keyboard apart, it actually has some faint lube. It is also worth noting that this keyboard supports plate mount stabilizers only. Now, while I feel like this keyboard isn't meant to be taken apart, since there's no real reason given how it's structured, I still want to show you how it is built. So let's tear this keyboard apart. Tearing this keyboard apart is actually pretty easy, as the two-part chassis is just held together by a few screws at the bottom. 
However, since the plate is integrated with the top housing, we have to remove all the keycaps and switches. By the way, this keyboard features an integrated plate mount design, which means the plate is integrated with the top housing, essentially giving you no flexibility at all when it comes to the material used and just limited to the acrylic plastic for your plate. This offers a very stiff and solid typing experience. Now, here's a closer look at the stock plate mount stabilizers. Barely lube, right? Next, we have the PCB, and as you can tell, we don't have any kind of foam here, and the PCB doesn't support screw-in stabilizers as I've pointed out earlier. Under the PCB, we have the 3000mAh battery still attached. I actually had a hard time removing the wire of the battery from the PCB since one, the socket is quite flimsy and feels like it can get damaged very easily. And second, the plug is really hard to pull out that I almost damaged the wire so I figured it's not worth it. Anyways, the hot swap sockets are made by Kill, and like I said, we don't have any kind of foam here. Looking closer, the stabilizers actually have some pre-applied lubricant. However, it's super faint that left me wondering why they even bothered. Overall, the teardown process is fairly easy except for the battery and like I said, I don't think there's a need for you to open this keyboard at all. Now here's a sound test for you guys so you can have a bit of an idea how the Gatler North Pole yellow switches sound on this full acrylic casing. Alright, so before we discuss the rest of its features like lighting effects, software, and performance, let me share with you my honest thoughts about this Xbox ergonomic layout. Usually, my average typing speed is around 90 words per minute, but as you've seen on the typing test, I was only able to reach around 50, and that is due to the unorthodox layout. Adapting to this layout requires patience, dedication, and a lot of time, and it will definitely mess up your muscle memory. If you choose this keyboard, make sure you are ready to let go of what you're used to when it comes to typing. With that said, I can still see the potential of this for those people who really want to learn touch typing and embrace this ergonomic layout and for sure will get the benefits of a more comfortable typing experience. However, I think I can also say the same when it comes to the standard Alice or Arisu keyboards or even split keyboards with essentially the same goal but without the compromises of having to adapt to a new layout, especially having to adjust the way you reach the backspace and enter keys, not to mention the ortholinear alphanumeric keys. So yeah. Now, thanks to the clear acrylic casing, clear switch housing, and white colored PCB, the RGB illumination of this keyboard is quite vibrant even though the keycaps are not shine through. Here, let me breeze through all the different lighting effects here. As for the performance, I didn't encounter any notable issues when it comes to its wireless stability. However, as per my testing, NKRO is only limited to up to 4 keys on both Bluetooth and wired mode which is kind of a letdown to be honest. I don't know if there is a specific key combination to toggle it but right now, it's only up to 4 keys at the same time. What's good here is that you can connect this to up to 5 devices compared to other keyboards that are limited to only 2 to 3. Lastly, in terms of software, this keyboard supports QMK and Xbox is utilizing a web page called KeyboardLab.club. Inside this configuration tool, we have a key map and macro tab, download and import config file, 
fingerprint key map and a built-in key tester. You can also toggle show key sizes to know about key cap compatibility. Here you can change a keys function to a different function like other primary keys, layer and layer tab functions, other settings, and shortcuts. What I did here is I changed the insert keys function to print screen. Then download the config file, press Fn plus backspace to enter the FU mode indicated by the LED on the escape key. Then a window explorer will pop out like an external storage. Then move the downloaded config file here and it will automatically overwrite the existing file and restart the keyboard. Once that's done, you can now test if it works. Now going back to the configuration site, we have layer 1 where you can see the other functions like lighting effects and we also have layer 2 and 3. Granted, it's not as simple as standalone software but at the end of the day, it gets the job done. By the way, instead of the stock coil cable, I opted to partner this with the Cyan Cold Cable from Cooler Master which perfectly matches the keycaps. It's also not sponsored but I'll also put some links below if you're interested. Overall, to conclude, what I like about the Xbox Crystal is the design and construction with a full acrylic casing that complements well with the RGB lighting. I also like the standard keycap sizes and the hot swappable switches and Bluetooth connectivity with up to 5 different devices. The only thing that I don't particularly like about this keyboard is the unorthodox Xbox layout that requires a lot of time, patience, and dedication. But if you're willing to do all that and you're suffering from wrist pains, then this is a good option to consider. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. This is not sponsored, but the Xbox did provide this as a review sample. They will see this video the same as you. And if you're interested, you can order this now from their website. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you appreciate this video and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.